So, basically, I've already made this video before, but this one's going to be a better version. Welcome everyone to another little F1 2020 tutorial style video. This one is going to be once again about camera settings. So in the last video, which I made probably about several months ago now, which is in the card above, I found some camera settings I was pretty happy with. And I also had the steering animation turned off. But using the beautiful thing we call hindsight, I should have looked a lot deeper into the whole thing. Eventually I did. And so for the final event of F1 Esports, I rocked some new camera settings with the steering animation turned on. And trust me when I say it's so much better. Now, coincidentally, the final round of F1 Esports was my best event by a long shot, so this may have been a factor. The camera settings themselves may have played a vital role as to why this was the case. But anyway, that is enough chat. Let's have a little look and see what the camera settings are. So first of all, you're going to want to make sure you're in the right driving camera in the first place. So instead of TV Pod, which is what most people use, TV Pod Offset is the one you're going to want to make work. And there's a reason for using TV Pod Offset. We'll get to that in a bit. So the details or the numbers you want, minus 0.3, minus 0.6, plus 0.15, minus 0.5, plus 0.2, 0, 0, 0. So TV pod offset and kind of adjusting the values to make that work, for me, allowed me to be more accurate with the car and the placement of the car, which in consistency wise, it helps so much. And I noticed it straight away and once I got used to it, I was seeing a lot of improvement, not just in lap time, but in the consistency, especially in the races, and the ability to deliver quick qualifying lap times again and again and again, because I was just being more accurate in terms of where I was putting the car. Uh, the field of view settings as well, they're slightly different in TV pod offset compared with the normal TV pod. This gives you the sensation you're not going as fast, and when you're going at the speed a Formula One car's going, you need kind of every bit of bandwidth in your brain to be there. So it just helped like cope with the speeds a little bit more. Uh, so those two main things combined made the camera settings a lot better. Turning the steering animation off was a mistake. In hindsight, I said it earlier, I should not have done that. I thought it would save some frame rate and stop myself becoming distracted when the wheel in the game's turning. When in fact, having that extra visual sense of what the car in the game is doing by looking at the wheel, it can actually help you be more accurate and consistent with your driving. So, I mean, I'm not directly looking at the wheel, I'm looking at the track, of course, but it's in your peripheral vision, which it can still be really helpful. And so to those of you, and there are loads of you that have commented saying, like, content's unwatchable because the wheel doesn't move or anything like that. Don't worry, it's gonna be back to normal. It's gonna move, it's gonna look beautiful. So, uh, yeah. But anyway, finally, if we move to the HUD, this is a lot different compared with the last video I did. And if I'm being brutally honest, in the last video, I wasn't even aware you could move the HUD in F1 2020 at all. So it was only until I watched a TRL Limitless video from JD, of course, the good man. I saw it and he had the HUD kind of customized and I really liked it. So I saw it and tried it, kind of adjusted it a little bit to how I wanted it. And uh, I mean, you've been watching it pretty much all video, but that's how my HUD looks now. And so if you don't know how to adjust the on-screen display HUD, I'm gonna show you anyway. I'm sure most of you know how to do it. So go into on-screen display, OSD customization, and then you've got all of the things in front of you, the, the overlays. So you can adjust the size of them, the position of them, what's being displayed in front of you in terms of what data. Uh, so it's pretty helpful. Mine's a good baseline, but of course, adjust yours to exactly how you want it. Just for the record, I now play all of my sim racing stuff on a widescreen monitor I got given from BenQ. Now, the link to the monitor is in the description below. I'm not trying to sell it to you. I'm simply recommending it to you because I really like it. I think it gives me a wider view of the track. It immerses me a little bit more, which is always good. And for wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing especially, there's just less guesswork involved, which again, is always a good thing. You can be more accurate. And uh, that is also why the reason for this video's resolution is a bit different to normal and same with the F1 Esports videos as well I've done. So I just want to know in the comments below, I'd be intrigued to know if it's watchable or not and I can kind of adjust it accordingly from the content side of things. So yeah, let me know in the comments below. But for this short and sweet video, that is it. I hope it helped and uh, make sure you sub away to the channel because there is more content on the way. But for now and until the next video, I'll see you soon.